everybody, welcome back to Bentley House. I'm Ara, and I made a set for another YouTuber. This was a really fun project. It has interchangeable panels so the room can be changed around. I made it very similarly to the way that I made the cardboard house, except for the movable wall part, so I didn't really film the process. But instead today, I'm gonna show you how I made some generic dollhouse furniture look more like mouse house furniture that's going to fit a project more like this. This scene is meant to be inside of a tree where a mouse lives and so I needed to create furniture that made sense for a mouse. The deadline for me getting this project done was really short and so I needed to take some shortcuts. With those shortcuts came some new techniques on how to make some generic looking dollhouse furniture seem like it's a little bit more from the... Thank you! Seem like it's a little bit more for a woodland creature. If you want to know a little bit more about this set, I'll give you a demonstration at the end of the video, but I hope you enjoy. So let's get started. As many of you know, I love to build my own furniture, but for this project in particular, I needed to start with some pre-made sets that matched each other just because of my time restraint. So I'm going to be working with this bedroom set that comes with one bed, a dresser, and a nightstand. If you do find that you want to follow along with this tutorial, you do not have to have this particular set for you to be successful. Really, I think all these techniques would work with a multitude of different types of furniture, and I really like the idea of just using what you have and changing it into a mouse house set if you would like one. I'm also using this other set I found that is a kitchen or dining room set. It was already a little bit messed up, um, as you can tell from the legs, and there was a broken leg in the package. So always that makes me feel a little bit better about completely changing something when it already needed a little TLC in the first place. Starting with the bedroom set, I'm going to set the mattress aside and then I am going to begin by removing the handles off of the little drawers. I want to replace this with something a little bit more rustic, but these do seem to be some nice metal knobs, so I'm going to make sure to save those, possibly for a future project. Then I'm going to make sure to sand everything down, and I did notice there was some glue kind of squeezing out of the side, so I'm sanding that down and making sure that any area that has that glossy finish gets a good scrub with the sandpaper. This is going to make sure any finishes I add onto it stick really well, and I don't have to worry about the paint coming off later. After sanding, I'm just going to rub everything down with a damp paper towel. This is going to remove any of the dust that's left over, making sure that I have a nice clean surface. Now I'm going to be taking some chipboard. This is really thin material that is like cereal box material. I know it has different names in different countries. I'm going to be cutting it into strips and I got the measurement of this strip from the drawer front. So that's how I kind of decided uh, how thick I wanted my first scrap of chipboard to be. So as you can see, it will one strip will fit all the way across my drawer front. Now I'm going to be using this thickness as a standard and cutting several more strips of chipboard so I'm ready to add it onto my piece of furniture. I'm going to start with the drawer fronts because it's specifically made for that size, so they should be the easiest to cover. I just marked it with a pencil and I'm going to glue it straight on to the front of the drawer. This will cover up the hole where the knob was and it will create a surface that later I am going to carve some details into. I'm using Fabri-Tac glue for this, but tacky glue should work as well. Now I'm going to cover the top of the bedside table and to do this I am cutting them so that they are the correct width this is going to take a total of three strips and I'm going to start in the center so there is one large strip in the center and then I'm going to add it to the back making sure that I leave a slight gap and then add one to the front and it's okay that it overhangs the top. Once it's dry, I can flip it over and take a sharp pair of scissors and just cut off the excess. This is how I know that it will match the top of my bedside table perfectly. Now that I've finished the top, I can move on to the side. 
I was very lucky in the fact that my thickness that I had previously cut fit perfectly on the side of this table in between the two legs, but if it hadn't, all I needed to do is take some scissors and cut down the width. I'm leaving the original four supports on the corners uncovered because once I paint everything together, it will look like it all goes together. So I'm just very simply covering the top, the sides, and the drawer fronts. Now it's time to add some details into the chipboard. For this, I'm gonna go through my tools and pick out a few files, um, a pokey tool or an owl, I remembered this time, A-W-L, <laughs> and a few other tools that I think might help with the process of turning this flat chipboard into a textured piece of wood. Starting with my files, I am going to drag them in a downwards motion in the crack I created between the chipboard. This is going to create a slice in the existing wood of my original furniture, so it carries on the illusion that these are individual planks on top of the bedside table and not just one big piece of wood. Now I'm using my X-Acto knife very carefully to cut some little slits in the edges of the chipboard strips. The reason I'm doing this is I want the wood to look a little bit more worn, a little bit more aged, not as crisp on the edges because these are mice that built the furniture and not, you know, someone with a saw. Now I'm going to be using the owl to scrape straight lines down the surface of the chipboard. This is what's going to give a wood texture or a wood grain look to my chipboard pieces. It's kind of hard to see right now, but once it starts getting paint on it, it will be a little bit easier to spot. I'm also going to be using my files to round off the corners just a little bit. And again, this is to get rid of those very sharp edges and just to continue that idea that everything is worn and a little bit more rough. I did the same exact steps on the dresser, it's just a little bit bigger with more drawers. Because this is all one set, I did the very same techniques on the bed, but because it's a different shape, I had to go about it just a little bit differently. For the bed frame, I just used a piece that went all the way around and left the feet uncovered. And then for the headboard, because it's rounded, I decided to cut some thinner strips of chipboard. This is going to make it a little bit easier for me to go up and around the top of that sleigh bed headboard piece. <laughs> so I'm just going and alternating different sizes till I get to the top. And once I go over the top and around, I use small pieces so that it's easier to glue everything on. I use the same exact tools and techniques I used on the previous two pieces to start to rough up the chipboard and add a little interest and age all over the bed. Again, adding some of that texture is going to make it look like wood grain once I paint everything. To start painting, I'm going to be using a base coat of black paint. The reason for this is I want to make sure I get into the cracks in between the chipboard pieces really, really well. This is going to help them stand out and make sure that all of my hard work of making it look like individual planks stands out in the end. Then I'm going to go over it with a little bit of a lighter layer of brown paint. Of course, we've got to do brown. <laughs> my favorite color and I think it just really brings out this wood texture when you do it this way. It's not completely a dry brush but it does have less paint on it than when I did the layer of black paint and you can really see that grain start to come out and it looks like some older planks of wood. Whenever I'm doing a set like this where I know I want everything to match, I try to make sure I paint it at the same time and this helps me know that everything's getting the same paint treatment. Lastly, I'm going over this with a little bit of a cream paint. Whenever I'm painting something, I try to use three colors, a dark, a medium, and a light, and I feel like all of that comes together to make a really interesting detailed piece. I really like how these are coming out so far, but of course we're going to need some drawer handles. 
and I couldn't think of anything more perfect than actually going outside and looking for something natural to go with this natural look that I'm trying to create. So I took out my inspection partner and we got together some twigs of different sizes. At this point, I'm also thinking about the next set of furniture I'm about to show you. So I wanted to make sure and get several different options. Are you okay? Okay, bye. I'm going to put these in the oven at a low temperature just to bake them a bit and make sure that nothing is going to be infesting my dollhouse project after this point. To make the most interesting looking handles, I'm looking for some of the knobby bits that are on some of the thinnest sticks that I found. I'm cutting them all to about the same length and making sure they look good on the drawer fronts before I glue them on. Then I'm going to take a little bit of the same cream paint that I used on the body of the furniture and just lightly brush that over the sticks and this will make it all look cohesive. I really think something like this could also work for maybe a western or a lodge or any kind of project like that. I really like how it came out. This does not have to be just for a mouse house. I'm going to quickly upgrade the mattress just because I made the furniture darker. I think making the mattress lighter will give a really good contrast. I'm keeping in mind that this is furniture for a mouse, so I'm trying to not get too complicated with hemming, and all I'm going to do is pull at the edges of my fabric to make it unraveled, because I imagine this mouse would have used found fabric in order to create its bed. The more I work with fabric, the more I like using just the tiniest bit of hot glue to get it to lay the way I want it to. But of course you can use any glue you'd like. You just have to be careful that the glue does not seep through the fabric. But this works really quickly. I just fold it the way I want it to look and then I just push the fabric into the glue and hold it until it dries. Here's how it looks all finished up. Of course, I had to recover the pillow as well. This was as simple as wrapping the existing pillow a few times in the same color fabric and then just squishing down the edges and unraveling them a bit to make just a simple pillow. To continue on with the mouse theme, I have this material, it's called creepy cloth. You can get it from dollar stores around Halloween time. I thought it looked like another bit of found stuff that would just add a little bit of interest to this bed. And I did end up gluing it down, but it laid pretty flat on its own. So these are the three pieces I came up with for the mouse house bedroom set. I did really like the way the set looked before. I didn't have any issues with it, but I feel like if I'm going to make something look a little bit more like something that would be in a woodland creature's home, that this is more along the lines of what I would be thinking. So I'm very happy with how this came out. And now it's time to move over and work on the dining room set which is going to be getting a very different look because I want it to look like it has very rough tree bark on the surface of it. I realized right off the bat that this was going to be a bit more of a dramatic transformation. First of all, because there's more pieces and all of these pieces look a bit more modern. I started off doing the same exact steps where I sanded everything down. I removed the existing handles and then specifically for these pieces, I removed all the legs and boy, were there a lot of legs on all these pieces. I decided I wanted to replace the legs with sticks later down the road. And so I just put them all to the side. The technique for making the bark texture ended up being really fun, but also really time consuming because of all the dry times. I started by laying down a thin layer of matte Mod Podge, and then I took some tissue paper and crumpled it up as much as I could. Then I pulled it out, not all the way flat, but uh, with still a few crumples in it, and then pushed it down into the Mod Podge, making sure that it touched as much of it as possible. I made sure to make all the folds that I wanted because I knew this is what was going to create the tree bark texture. 
Once that was firmly down onto the table surface, I went back with some matte Mod Podge and went over the top. This was going to make sure that everything was firmly glued down. Once the top was dry enough for me to touch it, I added some glue on the edges and then folded the tissue paper down over the edge. I wanted it to cover the sides of the table, but not the bottom. The look that I'm going for here is that these pieces of furniture were made out of strips of bark that had kind of fallen off the tree. So there's only going to be bark on one side. Once everything's glued down on the sides, I can simply just tear at the edges where I want to take off the tissue paper and remove it. And then to clean it up, I'm just taking one of my files that I used on the previous set, and then when I move my file in a downward position, it evenly cuts off the tissue paper at the very edge of the table. Now I have a completely covered table on one side and all the edges. This process was very similar on the chair, but I just had to do smaller portions of the chair at a time. I'm starting with the inside back of the chair, crumpling up a small bit of tissue paper. And the whole time I'm doing this, I'm trying to remember the grain of the wood or the grain of the bark and trying to make sure that it's going in the same direction or that there is a specific direction that you can see once I paint everything. I'm going back over the top with Mod Podge and then I'm starting on the seat of the chair. I'm just going to do a little bit at a time covering any place I want to be covered with bark and then letting it dry. I also decided to do the back of the chair um, and I didn't quite know how I wanted it to be finished at the top because it, you know, it's supposed to look like bark. And so what I decided to do was leave it kind of sticking up past the top of the chair so that it looks like the bark's sticking up. Like, I don't know how to describe it, but you'll see once I paint it. So I let the tissue paper go past the top of the chair just so it looked like wood was sticking up. I don't know if that makes sense. You can let me know in the comments. <laughs> Once I was happy with how the bark was looking, I did the other chair, and so now I have two covered chairs and the table. The dresser, or the side table, whatever you want to call it, was pretty easy. I did it the same way as the tabletop, where I did the sides and the top, just the same way with tissue paper, and then made sure to remove the extra. And then I made sure to do the tissue paper treatment to the front of each drawer. The one thing I did not cover was the back or I didn't cover the dividers in between the drawers. I just left those as they were. It was really important on the drawers that I go back and clean up any of the messy edges so that once it went back into the side table or the dresser, it fit inside the area. If I had any tissue paper sticking over the side, it may not work as well. I had a couple of pieces that had a door on it, and so I left the door attached just because that was the easiest thing to do, and then I carefully made sure that no glue got into that gap where the door turns so that it still worked once the tissue paper dried. Now it is time for painting. As opposed to the previous set I did, I am going to be starting with a very light base coat of this cream color because this is going to be the bare wood color that the bark is sitting on top of. So everything is going to be completely covered in this color. This looks very plain now, but once I start painting the bark, I think it'll make a really nice contrast. To make the bark on top, I am heavily loading my paintbrush with a lot of brown paint. This is because I want this paint to go on very thick. I'm trying to stick to doing just one pass with my paintbrush if possible. Here I do a couple, but I don't want to go over it very much. The reason for this is this is going to give that bark look to where it's kind of cracking and you can see the wood in between, the wood colors. So I'm keeping the paint very thick, but I'm not going back too much and retouching it. I am retouching a little bit on the edge, but wherever there is paint showing through on the inside because of the tissue paper layers, I am leaving that. I'm going to do the same thing on every single surface that I put tissue paper on. 
and I'm just going to be very careful, go very slow, and make sure I have that thick layer of brown paint. This process ended up being so fun that now I'm trying to think of what other projects I can just literally turn into bark, <laughs> just because the painting process was so enjoyable. I'm now going back with that same cream that was my base coat and I'm dry brushing, really, really dry brush, not a lot of paint on my brush, but I'm going back over the top because this is going to hit all those wrinkles and cracks that was created by the tissue paper layer. And this is going to, again, bring out some of that bark texture that I'm really looking for. As you can see, a lot of this piece is going to stay that cream base coat. And that's because I want this to look like it was literally made out of bark that fell off the tree and everything else was made with the interior parts of the tree or wood that was found. On the sides of the chairs, I went back and just painted a strip of that cream color so it looks like wood that's been revealed that's inside of the upper bark layer. I really like this little detail, but I think it could have also been perfectly fine just being all brown or all bark. Now it's time to create the legs. So what I did was I kept the original legs and looked for sticks that matched the thickness. And then I used a pencil to mark out different areas that were somewhat straight. And that way I could just cut them with my easy cutter tool. And I knew that I had a similar size leg that would work inside the whole of the table. I'm gluing these in with hot glue because I know that's going to take hold really quickly, but then I can always go back and add some reinforcing glue that holds on a little bit better than hot glue once everything's glued in. This was such a quick and easy upgrade to make this more woodland mouse house feature on these pieces of furniture. I'm so happy I decided to do this with the legs. I mean, it was free craft supplies from my backyard. I used that cream paint to go over the sticks just so that everything looked cohesive. And here is the finished table, which surprisingly has straighter legs with these knobbly sticks than it did when I first got it. Now it's time to move on to the handles, which I'm doing in a very similar way I did to the first set of furniture. I'm just cutting off interesting sections of the sticks. Finally, I decided to convert one of these dresser pieces, since I had two, into a sink stand. I made a little rectangle of chipboard and then surrounded it with some foam board, and I'm just going to make a faux sink, so I'm not being super exact with it. Something kind of rustic looking, so I'm covering the foam with some Mod Podge because I want to make it look like stone. I found this piece of a stick that kind of looks like a Y. I thought it looked like a faucet. So I'm cutting out a section in the foam board and I'm just gonna stick the faucet into the side. I'm gonna carefully cover the foam board with some gray paint to give it that stone look. And this is how it's going to look on top of the piece. I'm going to put a black square of paper where the drain is because I don't really feel like drilling into this top, so I'm just going to fake a hole. I found another piece of stick that kind of looked like a knob, so I'm gluing that on top of the faucet. So here I have my little fake sink on top of this, I guess it's supposed to be like a sideboard table, but now it's a sink. So these are my final pieces that I made from the dining room set. I'm really happy with how it came out. I think it has a lot more character than it did when it first started. Again, I don't have any problem with the way it looked before, but I think going into a mouse house, this is what I want to see. And it's just such a fun transition to see it from a more modern set into what was created with really just some glue and tissue paper and some paint. So now I'm gonna tell you a little bit more about the set that I built that I mentioned at the beginning of the video. I built this set for the channel Aaron's Animals and I will leave some more information down below with a link to his video where he used this set. I needed to create a room that was interchangeable and could look like different rooms in a mouse house. 
As you can see, this floor has a channel that goes all the way around the back and there is room for five walls to be inserted in the floor. By the way, the floor is made just like I did in the cardboard house. I created seven panels in total so that they could be interchangeable. Each panel has a column on the very left side that can overlap the next panel. And on the back, they have these chipboard wings that will help secure them so that nothing moves or gets out of place during filming. So as you can see, I can just insert the walls into the groove in the back of the floor. I clip the wings together and this will keep the walls in place and they also keep any light from coming through so that it looks like a solid wall. There were a few specialty pieces that were requested like a fireplace and a door and a window. So those were specifically built very similar to the way I did the cardboard house. And then I made the other ones all blank walls so that they could be easily changed. So this is how it looks once everything is clipped together on the back. And this is how it looks on the front. So this is what all this furniture was made for. I'm so sorry I wasn't able to film the entire process. I really did have fun with this and I think it would be great if um, I made this again in the future. Um, an interchangeable room with different walls sounds like a really fun concept for taking photos of miniatures or just having something that's a little bit easy to change. So that's all I have for you today. I hope you enjoyed it. I had so much fun with this project. If you make something similar to this, turn some dollhouse furniture into mouse house furniture, please tag me on Instagram so I can see what you've created. I hope you have an amazing week and I'll see you in the next one. Bye. I wanna show you this because my sister has a chinchilla. Now this is for, this is a mouse house, so not for a chinchilla. But she has a chinchilla that she got one of those like fancy portraits done for and so i asked her to send it to me and i framed it and so i'm going to send this with the whole set as like a picture to go on the wall so it'll be really fun to see if they actually use a chinchilla but i know this chinchilla it's theodore so i thought that'd be fun to put our family rodent into the mouse house